So here we are. I'm finishing up. It's a week after my birthday. And I'm finishing up the cake I got. You can't see it. I don't want you to see it because I'm finishing up. It's carrot cake. It's got, got red, black, and green uh, icing. You know, then it had the happy, the red had, no, and the red stripe had happy, and that the happy was in, I think, green. And then the black stripe, Stripes his bad birthday, and that was, and the, the birthday was in red. And then the green side had uh, had uh, Anthony, and that, and that icing was in black. So you see, the red, black, and green was a theme all the way through that. You see, don't worry about that part. Because hey, you know they know me here. You know, black nationalist. No, no, that's not. <laughs> well, black, red, black, and green. Let me tell you about that. Wait a second. Hmm. Oh, that in there. It's interesting. Because in the Yoruba culture, um, red, black, and green is, um, well, in the Yoruba culture, the, the, the strain that came up through, you know, from Nigeria through Cuba to the United States, Ogun's color is red. Well, Ogun's color is, is uh, black, green, and a little bit of red. So that's red, black, and green, see? And I'm a child of Ogun, so there you go, right? And, and you know, Ogun is the warrior. Let's see Sloan there. Sloan, the Anglo meaning of Sloan is warrior. Think about that. Anyway, so people know me. Um, a typical Ogun, this is the last piece of cake. Now, you'd think I would share it with somebody, but I snuck it out of the thing there. I put the, I got this, um, I got the, the, the cherries. I love cherries. I, I, I pitted the cherries in my mouth, so there's cherries in there, right? And then I got this chocolate, non jerry frozen dessert made with coconut milk, okay? I don't know what the, what, what the heck is in here. I've been eating on it. It's a coconut milk, whey, sugar, cocoa powder, something, some something dextrin, corn, dextrose. Uh, that's a corn syrup, I guess. Um, uh, gum, ba 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 ba. I don't know stuff like that. But it tastes good. It's chocolate, right? Not enough chocolate for me, so I took a little Hershey's chocolate, put over that there too. There you go. You know. So I'm finishing that. It took me like three, four days to go through that. So I'm not really not a big sweetness thing, but Ogun, but. Ogun would do, let me tell you a goon story. <laughs> let me tell you an Anthony, a Sloan a goon story. Okay, here we go. I was in the Air Force, right? Okay, we used to run with crews, you know, dudes in there, we would run. I mean, it was just at McGuire Air Force Base. We never went overseas. Well, I never went overseas. I never was in, it's during the Vietnam era, but I would never was in country. I never in Vietnam. By the way, see, uh, see Spike's movies, the, the Spike Lee joint, The Five Brothers, see that film. All right. <clears throat> So I had a grand time, the era, but I, I felt a little guilty. I was a lab technician, but if, if they sent me to Vietnam, I'd have to be in the air-conditioned tent anyway. But that still wouldn't escape from Agent Orange. Talk about Agent Orange. We're in a St. Louis right now, in Olivet, to be exact. You know what's in Olivet? Monsanto. You know, the, the whole DuPont, Monsanto, now bear kind of thing. So I don't mean, I get into that. It upset me. So what I'm doing, so, so we used to run, right? At one time, a group of us, we were in um, Philadelphia, right? And you know, Philly, you know, Philly cheesesteak, whatever happened. So it was late. It was late. I don't, I don't know. Late at night, 11 o'clock. So we all got like chicken, you know, the, the roasted chicken, like half a chicken. I ever had a half a chicken like that. And we was going to somebody's place. So we got to the place. Everybody was breaking down. I remember what they were eating. But then everybody looked around. They was, was ready to eat. And they said, well, Sloan, where's your food? I said, I ate it. What? I inhaled that chicken. Let me tell you. That's the way Ogun is, man. If you're not watching, Ogun just eat the food. If you don't add, if it's safe, I'm, I'm, I have this right here. Somebody wanted a piece. I said, oh, sure, you can have some. But they first, they got to catch me <laughs> before they get some. <laughs> hmm. Oh. I want to talk to my mouth, though. Like any good diplomat. When they have the diplomatic dinners, they don't film the food, the, the, the food in because they would have a different way to eat, you know. Some people eat with their hand, like in Senegal, eat with your hand. Anyway, what the point is. Um, but I was, uh, I'm here, um, and um, you know who else is? Well, it's St. Louis, East St. Louis, is uh, Eugene B. Redmond. You know Eugene? The famous poet, though, he's not famous to him. The great poet, Eugene Redmond. I was talking to him, and... Um, you no know, people are getting a little antsy. Well, there are people getting, been getting antsy. It's been about three months. I don't know how long this thing's been going on. But there's going to be an event on the 25th at some forest park thing, right? 
it was social distancing. So I get to I go there and, and see Eugene there performing and stuff like that. Eugene's a great poet. He invented the Quisaba. No, nah, don't worry about it. You look him up or something like that. I'll put it in the show. No, I'm gonna put it in the show. I'll do something. Anyway, so so that was one thing. But then I was really thinking about I mean, if the, one of the things we said, like, you know, the social distancing, right now, you know, they, they get the, this test for the, the, the corona, the COVID-V, whatever, have, they stick the thing in your nose. Nah, he ain't sticking nothing in my nose. This stuff hurts. It hurts. But now I hear they, they maybe have some sort of saliva solution to that. So as the months go on, I guess the testing will be more refined. They'll have other solutions, you know, maybe they'll, well, however it is. The saliva thing, I'll do. But the sticking this swab down your nose, I'm not a torture kind of guy. Let me tell you, if I was, <laughs> say for instance, I was in the NAR, right? I'm in my air conditioning tent, and they overrun the base, something like that, and I'm a dedicated lab technician doing my, and I'm not paying attention, and they grab me, right? Then they take me to some, you know, Viet Cong prison. The first thing I said, boys, fellas, look, first of all, you have to say, I'm a brother. <laughs> I would try to brother my way out of the situation. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm skipping around. Let me say, here's what people don't remember. Remember when, when Iran did that little thing that the Ayatollah came in or whatever, you know, he'd been in France broadcasting for years. It was like almost like a peaceful revolution, right? And But, but people, when they took the hostages, but they didn't report, especially in that movie, that, that Ben Affleck movie, you know, the the one with, you know, with John Goodman. Anyway, one of the things they said was the first thing they said, Hey, you brothers can go, man. Y'all been you been through <laughs> been through hell and say we ain't got no beef with you. Y'all can go. We we know it wasn't you. We, you know we we know it was Teddy Roosevelt's son or whoever it was or whoever son it was that did this with the CIA. So you brothers can go. If anybody want to go? You brothers want to go? Y'all can go. I don't know how many went. I just remember that, that happened. But the point is this: Look, I don't trust nothing the white man said. I was gonna say I don't trust nothing somebody that has the white mentality solution that got us into this situation. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about COVID. I'm talking about the whole American experience. You know, then white mentality people got together and they at every turn, you know, if you wasn't white mentality, and that mentality included owning stuff, be it, be it land or slaves. Remember, slave was worth more than houses back then. It was, it was, slave was worth a lot. You know what I mean? In fact, you, you know this, George, George Washington, I mean, you know, his, his, his woman, you know, is that Martha? His woman, you know, he's one. She's the one that had all the slaves. She's the one that had the money in the family. You see what I mean? In fact, that's I was reading someplace, like forty percent of the slaveholders in the South were, were women. You know, their husband died in a duel or something like that. They inherit the thing. They run the slaves. Boom, 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 boom. Anyway, back to the point. So here I am thinking, I ain't gonna. No, you know, you get the. Then I go. You would do the social distancing. Or whatever have you, you know, my immune system is, is cool, you know, because I mean, I'm for years I've been advocating, hey, you know, if the if the virus is going to, you know, do whatever it's going to do, the human beings got to, you know, evolve along with the virus is the virus is it's not just, you know, viruses come all the time. But human beings don't want to do that. They want to take magic pills. They want to wait. They, they want to do stuff like live forever. I don't know what human beings, you know, deep. I don't know what they want to do. I'm a human being, and I don't. I don't know what they want to do. I know what I want to do. What I want to do. I want to. I want to live. I've lived a full life. You know what I mean? Blah 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 blah. But man, the solutions that they have coming on, I don't know. And plus, you know what? Especially Americans, they're so opportunistic. Just like, just like the virus is opportunistic. I told you all this before. Just like the virus is opportunistic. You know, that's what every time something happens, they pile stuff on there and they, they get all their programs. This is this is what I call the white mentality, white supremacist mentality. You know you have a white supremacist mentality when you want to uh, put fear into a situation so you can extract worth, what you think is worth from that situation. You see what I'm saying? So if you're that kind of person, then you're not long for this earth. That's all I'm going to say because the, the, the days is days is days. Oh, I shouldn't say that because now I sound like a preacher. Days of reckoning and whatever is coming, whatever. But look, just everybody, look, let me say again. You got to do your exercises. You know what I mean? Even if you just walk in, the, 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 the number seems to be three miles. Walk three miles in the morning or something like early morning, early morning. 
Okay, you're not an early morning person. Okay, in the evening when it's cool, anybody who's cool, that's when you do it. Dawn or dusk, you know what I mean? I, in the morning, what I do is like, you know, when I do my little walk, after the sun is coming up, so I do, I do my, I do my prayer meditation when you know, with the sun, because I'm walking in first light, da da da. But that's just me. You have to find out what's good for you. Okay, find out what's good for you and do it. Just do it. Do, do it. Make like you like me. T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet. Letting folks know what you only suspect. The only way you can let them know what you only suspect is by doing it yourself. Do it yourself. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it.